G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, it's Monday afternoon here in Australia, so it's getting close to Monday morning over in the States when the big markets are getting ready to open up and things are looking promising. But they've looked promising for a while now and then they always seem to roll over, at least of late, not always. So of late, that's what they have done. So we're really waiting to see what happens Monday. Are we finally going to start to make that move where Bitcoin's going to get up around that $60,000 mark and make a move above it? i.e. get into new price territory, or, or are we just going to roll over and do what we've been doing for a couple of weeks now? It's very hard to know, but look, the market cap's growing, which is good. We're staying above that $1.5 trillion mark consistently now, at least, you know, for, for the last few sort of weeks to maybe a month or so. Uh, and we'll just have to wait and see, you know, how long that can last, because there's still the possibility a big correction could come. But again, we'll have a look at some stories that makes me think that's unlikely. And my thought that Bitcoin might drop down to 42, 43,000 with a daily close hasn't happened. And we definitely haven't seen it wick down into the high uh, 30s. And look, that may not happen. But again, it's still a possibility and we'll just have to wait and see. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't really worry me. I'm, you know, I've got plenty of skin in the game anyway. It was just for the cash I had sitting on the sideline that I would have invested it. I'm still dollar cost averaging into uh, some of the lower cap projects at the moment. For me, Bitcoin at 50,000, yeah, I don't really need to dollar cost average into it because I believe I can put it into other things where it'll perform better. And then I will turn those profits into Bitcoin and I would have got more from doing it that way. At least that's my hope. I could be wrong, but generally I haven't done too bad in the altcoin space. But again, the bulk of what I've uh, put in is still really in sort of Bitcoin and Ethereum anyway. All right, moving on. BTC dominance dropping down, so 58%, still staying under 60%. ETH dominance has risen a little bit, so everyone's starting to get a little bit speculative, obviously. Getting back into the you know altcoins and things like that, and particularly in ETH. Maybe that uh, EIP 1559 news has you know, got people a little bit excited. We'll have to wait and see. Gas prices, well, they are what they are. They're not high, but they're not low either. All right, we can see, look, it just looks like a sea of green at the moment, which is good. But again, we just have to wait until the big markets open to really see what kind of happens. All right, what's really pumped in the last 24 hours? All right, Engine Coin is just going on an absolute tear. There's a lot of excitement around Engine Coin, and I am so glad that I held on to Engine Coin. Now, I've said this before, I bought it quite a long time ago, and it just wasn't doing anything, and so I was basically getting ready to sell, uh, and I'm extremely thankful that I held on to it. Uh, and like most coins, though, I'm wishing I didn't buy more of it. But anyway, that's always the way. All right, Decentraland, likewise, still in that same kind of space, doing quite well. Yearn Finance, starting to make a bit of a move. Ren, there we go. Ren's doing quite well. Again, another coin that, you know, I doubled down on a few, on twice, actually. Uh, and it didn't do what I thought it would do. And now it's finally starting to make some moves. So again, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, Uniswap, I've got a story about Uniswap doing quite well again, reserve token. Look, some great double-digit gains there. Really, once you start getting above 15%, that's pretty good gains for 24 hours. And we've got some that are like 20, 30, and 40%. So particularly engine on an absolute tear. And I'm sure, like most people, you probably thought that uh, it'd probably pull back uh, quite a bit and wouldn't just pump up so fast. But look, the whole NFT space and everything is really on fire at the moment. And I think that has a lot to do with why Decentraland and Engine Coin are doing so well at the moment. All right, Dogecoin even starting to make a bit of a move <laughs> again. And yeah, what can you do? Doge just knows no bounds <laughs> at the moment. So congratulations to anyone that got into Doge at a really good price. Uh, I got into Doge twice and sort of doubled my money twice. Uh, but then sold it all and now I am really kicking myself I didn't stay in for longer. But anyway, that's the way it is. Celsius Network doing all right and I have a, a very interesting story about Celsius Network. All right, a lot of green looks positive. What about losses? Did we have many losses or any losses in the top 100? All right, Ocean Protocol back 5%, starting to make some of that back in the last hour and again, it's still up 70%. 5% for seven days, so not so bad. ZK swaps, NEM, look, these are really small losses anyway. And I, again, anything under 5% uh, 
uh, and a loss for cryptocurrency is really like a 0% loss. And particularly, you know, if you've lost 5%, but it's gone up 75% in seven days, no one really cares about that whatsoever. All right, let's move on and have a look at Bitcoin itself. All right, so here we go. Here's my chart from the other day. So I have added some lines and it's just going to show that it actually is looking a little bit bullish at the moment. So this was our first initial downtrend. So we just kept staying under it. We finally broke out above it. And then it kind of rolled over a little bit or at least traveled sideways, broke out, traveled sideways, then fell down. But we can see we're drawing these uh, trend lines here and it's just breaking trend line after trend line after trend line at the moment. So we're still waiting to see what's gonna happen here. Is it gonna be more of the same where we're only just incrementally kind of, you know, chipping our way up? And so it could be, you know, an, another month or so before we finally go and, you know, retest 58, i.e. sort of 60,000, or are we getting ready to make the next big explosive move? Has this correction basically been this? Uh, I can't tell you for sure, I, I, I just don't know, but it is looking kind of bullish at the moment. Again, from this, we can see it just keeps, you know, breaking the trend line and then slowly moving up, but we still do have a ways to go before we're gonna kind of break. You know, let's round it up, 59,000 or even 60,000. I don't think that's gonna happen sort of overnight, but look, it could, we could see a candle like this, these kind of things happen, something like that would get us way above that. Uh, and look, if it was going to happen, it's probably gonna happen sort of today, Australian time, uh, sort of tomorrow or later, uh, first thing in the morning, uh, sort of American time, when the big markets open. But it is looking pretty good. All right, let's go over here. So Hong Kong listed, I'm gonna butcher this name and I apologize, Miute bought $40 million worth of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So Chinese tech company, Me Too, has announced a massive purchase of 380 Bitcoin and 15,000 Ethereum, representing an entry of about 40 million US dollars. Companies across the US have started dipping their toes into the cryptocurrency market, including MicroStrategy, with their 10 million Bitcoin purchase just a few days ago, two days ago, adding to their already large position. This announcement from Me Too signals a potential shift of interest expanding outwards from just the United States instead encapsulating uh, the global market. So it's not just big uh, American firms now, it's other firms that are starting to do it. And I'm, again, I do believe this is gonna catch on. Uh, I think a lot of them were waiting for you know, bigger dips and they were thinking it was gonna come and that's always dangerous in a bull market really. If there's a dip of more than kind of five, my, excuse me, more than five or 10% in Bitcoin, it's generally a pretty good time to buy. But, you know, you still have to be feeling comfortable with that purchase. Again, for me, I didn't want to buy any unless it dipped to 42,000 uh, and it hasn't done that and I've probably likely missed that opportunity completely. Uh, and again, for me, that's fine. I've got the cash, you know, sitting on the side for should we see any bigger dips uh, and I've got it earning some interest as well. So, you know, not a complete loss. All right, moving on. So uni, uni surges 50% in one week and becomes the first DeFi app token in crypto's top 10. So let's go back and have a look. All right, refresh, 1.617, let's have a look. Oh, there we go, we added a billion dollars. All right, there you go, Uniswap has done it. But look, Chainlink uh, is in the top 10, so you know, Chainlink, I suppose, is not exactly DeFi. It's going to play a part in DeFi, but it's not DeFi. And look at, you know, Bitcoin Cash falling out uh, of the top 10. XRP is sort of getting close to falling outside of the top 10 as well. But, you know, we'll just have to wait and see what happens with all of that. And we have a story about XRP. But well done to Uniswap for getting inside the top 10. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if it possibly goes up a little further, likely to take over XRP, unless XRP can clear up this lawsuit. Uh, and then, yeah, having a crack at Polkadot and Cardano, but look, it, it's got a ways to go to sort of get up to their kind of market cap. So we've got, you know, what is it? 18 million here, you know, to get up to Polkadot, it's got to go to 34. So it basically has to double and then to get to Cardano, it's got to th get to 37. I think that's, no, that might, that's, yeah, that's billion, sorry, uh, not million. So there you go, got a ways to go. All right, now, Celsius Network. 
Celsius Network is valued at $3.1 billion following an independent review. Uh, Celsius is expected to grow its assets under management by 25% annually through to 2025, according to Alpha Sigma Capital. Very interesting and very bullish for anyone holding the Celsius token. Crypto lending platform Celsius Network is worth three times its current market capitalization, underscoring the project's massive growth potential over the next five years, according to new research from Alpha Sigma Capital. Using 2020 financials obtained from Celsius, Alpha Sigma Capital has determined that the crypto company has an implied value of 3.13 billion, which is approximately three times greater than its current market capitalization of 1.1 billion excuse me it appears that celsius is currently undervalued uh, referring to the 126.414 million in revenue the company generated last year based on current year-to-date growth celsius appears to have significant upside ahead our projections are conservative for 2021 and we see uh, assets under management growth tapering off with another 3 billion in assets under managed growth by the end of the year from there we project that the company will be able to grow uh, 25% year over year through to 2025. That's a lot, like a 25% growth year to year. By the end of 2025, Celsius assets under management is expected to reach nearly 30 billion. Wow, I wish I had have gone into Celsius. I really do. The Celsius token will likely do amazingly if they continue to do that. Uh, and yeah, well done to anyone who got into Celsius and Celsius in general. Uh, a really good platform that uh, yeah, I wish I had got into a lot earlier. All right, now a little bit of Ripple news. So one of Ripple Labs' largest broke backers lost its bid to reclaim a $175 million investment in the blockchain company. A Delaware court denied the multi-billion uh, asset manager Tetragon, yeah, Tetragon Financial Group's request to redeem its Ripple equity for cash in the midst of an ongoing legal battle between Ripple and the US Security and Exchange Commission. UK-based Tetragon filed suit in January to reclaim its portion of the 200 million Series C financing of the blockchain company it led in 2019. The suit also aimed to freeze Ripple's liquid assets until it paid up. Now it appears Ripple won't have to with a Delaware uh, Chancery Court judge on Friday rejecting the plaintiff's claim. And here's why he did. The terms of the initial investment gave Tetragon the right to redeem its equity if Ripple was found to be a security. So until this is done and dusted, yeah, I, I think the right decision was made. The terms are right there. Yeah, if they're found a security, you get your money back. Not if they're uh, before court, because it has to, you know, it has to play its way out, and there has to be a resolution, a final verdict to come down. So yeah, I agree with this. Uh, you know, it, it's unfortunate for the company, but it sounds like it was there in black and white. Uh, they know the rules. They can't get the money back unless it is found a security. And if it's not found a security, <laughs> I'm sure the, X, uh, the Ripple, uh, the XRP price will likely go absolutely through the roof. And then these people probably won't be complaining so much, or this company, I should say. But we'll have to wait and see. At the moment, obviously, you know, money that you invested probably would have been better somewhere else than in Ripple. Uh, currently, although it did do quite well very early on in the year, right before the SEC uh, announcement that they were going to take them to court. All right, last but not least, so Goldman and Sachs executive predicts there may be consolidation coming for cryptocurrency infrastructure providers as the market matures. In a recent company podcast, Matt McDermott, global head of the digital assets for Goldman Sachs, Global Markets Division hinted that incumbent banks like Goldman could face pressure to increase their crypto business lines with obvious paths being with the obvious path being mergers and acquisitions. This is a fast evolving landscape where the crypto incumbents have certainly made huge progress over the last couple of years. There is an ex expectation from clients now that the incumbent banks will develop their offerings to satisfy that demand. And so certainly appetite uh, anticipate a certain amount of consolidation across this space. So basically what they're kind of saying is that, you know, some of the big banks and that, they're going to look to buy these smaller crypto uh, firms and things like that because they're not going to have a choice. They'll just simply get left behind. It's going to be too much for them to try and develop their own 
you know, cryptocurrency trading platforms and all the rest of it, it would just be easier for them to go and buy ones that are currently working and have done all the legwork. And that doesn't surprise me at all. I think the big banks have sort of have now seen the writing on the wall. They can see what's coming. They know that they can't fight it any longer. And now they're just trying to work out what's the best way to get in. Uh, and again, not push the price of everything up super high. And again, not have to build something from scratch. It's just going to be a lot easier from to buy, you know, existing businesses and things like that. And we've seen a number of articles come out about PayPal buying other companies and a number of, you know, again, other bigger financial institutions buying up these smaller companies. And that's how they are going to stay relevant. They won't die. Goldman and Sachs won't die. You know, JP Morgan and that won't die. They will literally just buy up these crypto businesses and yes it will cost them a fortune and they will it'll cost them a lot of money initially but now they are all of a sudden leaders in this new space they never developed it they were against it and they fought it as hard as they could and then in the end they just crumbled uh, and they didn't accept defeat because they're not defeated but they've accepted that they have had to uh, move on and they're going to be considered sort of innovators uh, in the future because they're going to be still sort of the early institutions to get in but you know people have been in the crypto space you know anytime prior to kind of 2021 and even 2020 will know the truth that they were you know bagging it for so long and you know hoping that it would just go away but i guess now they have admitted defeat in at least that sense all right that's it from me Monday afternoon here in Australia, things are looking pretty good, so we'll just have to wait and see. Is it going to follow through or could this simply roll over and again, be a bit of a fake out? Time will tell. I don't have any uh, exact answers for you. I, you know, I know what my opinion is and it's looking like it's pretty bullish uh, and things will most likely start to go up. But I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again and I'm never going to be you know, too proud to admit when I was wrong and I'm never going to try and pretend like I'm never wrong. I absolutely have been wrong. And that's why I say I don't offer financial advice. It's always just my personal opinion. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.